Hey guys, my name is Sandy Sills. I'm a licensed realtor here in Orlando. I cover Orlando and all surrounding areas. I'm also licensed in New York, but I tend to stay in Florida more, weather-wise, right? Today I'd like to do a video with you or for you regarding listing a home for sale with a realtor, okay? Listing a home for sale with a realtor. But before that, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to our channel. We have a lot of great real estate tips for you there. And if you click on that little bell, that little bell will alert you, that will alert you when we have a new video. And if it's not a topic that you like, you could go on and listen on in. Okay, let's get started. Listing a, list a home for sale with a realtor. So if you're listing your home for sale with a realtor, how do you choose the correct realtor? What are some of the stuff you should look for in finding a realtor? On this channel, we get customers from all over the place, you know, all over the different states. Right, so I'm going to try to be as general as possible on this video. So you want to make sure that you have a professional realtor. So how do you find that out? You want to research the realtor you're looking to use. So you could Google the realtor's name. You could ask the realtor to provide you with a resume or some marketing information as to how they're going to market the property and also what their experience look like. You can also have them show you different properties that they may also have in the market for sale and see how they present it. So that's going to be key and very important. Now, I don't think the company matters where the realtor is from because people buy people first before they buy product or service. So you want to make sure that the realtor that you're using is going to be representing you in the best light possible. Okay. Um, a realtor is going to ask you a few things that they want you to do in order to present your home in the best light to buyers. So they're going to ask you to neutralize your property as much as you can. They're going to ask you to declutter. They're going to ask you to remove all the personal pictures and the trophies and all that stuff that you have on the walls so that the buyer could see themselves in the home. A realtor may also ask you to do a pre-inspection. They, they may want you to get a home inspector to come in and do a pre-inspection before the property goes on the market. That way it takes out any surprises that, are not, that the buyer's inspector might find. Okay. A realtor may also ask you to do an appraisal. Even though they're gonna give you a market comparable analysis, based upon the condition of the market that you're going into, they may also ask to get an appraisal done. That way they know exactly what the figure, what an appraised figure is gonna come in at, right? That's gonna be very important. They may also ask you to get a stager. So a stager is gonna be someone that's gonna come in, look at the property and stage it in its best light. But this can be very pricey. So you have different levels of staging. They might give you a light staging. You could do, go from a light staging where you're just rearranging furniture so they look in the best light or maybe removing some furniture. Or you could do a full-scale staging where they're staging the entire house to flow a certain way, okay? Realtor may also ask you to get a home warranty company to offer back to the buyer. And this happens if you have older appliances or older hot water tank or older HVAC system. They'll ask you to do that as well. That's going to be very important because if the buyer comes and you have older appliances or older, older HVAC, older water tank, older plumbing, older electrical, that's going to be a concern for the buyer. And the home warranty company will cover the buyer from the day of closing until one year. Then the buyer will have a chance or a choice to renew at the end of the year once you sell them that property. Okay, that's going to be very important. Very important. A realtor is also going to want you to be priced competitively. So, you know, there are times when a seller might think, no, my property is worth $20,000 more than what the market value, the market analysis is saying. A realtor might list it for $20,000 more for a few days just to give you the benefit of the doubt, but they're going to want to reduce it back to where it's supposed to be. Also, when you overprice the property, you kind of take it away out of the, the, the bargaining chip for a lot of buyers. A lot of buyers may not want to look at it because they're going to say it's overpriced. So why am I even looking at it? Pretty sure the seller's not going to negotiate with me. Even though sellers might sometimes think, well, I'll make it more and they'll negotiate back down. That's not necessarily the case. Let's say your house is valued somewhere. Let's say your house is valued at 360, right? 360 as per the market analysis that your realtor did for you. But you want to market it at 380. If you, if you start off at 380, it's overpriced. You're not going to get that much showings. Because other realtors are telling their buyers what the property is worth. you got to realize that. And that's one thing I don't think sellers look into. 
When a buyer is represented by a realtor, that realtor is also looking to see what the value of the properties are that's selling that neighborhood. So if you're a pro if everything else is at 360 or 365 and you're at 380, people are gonna buy the ones for three. You're gonna you are gonna cause the other ones that are priced correctly to sell. So your property at 380 is gonna is gonna cause the other properties that listed at the correct price to sell because yours is overpriced and the buyers are going to be, well, that's just way of a price. I may as well buy this one that's priced correctly because the comparables are the same. Now, you might think, no, I have granite counters or I have maple cabinets or I have the best styling floors or whatever it is that you're thinking that you have. But the value of the home is based upon comparable homes that's sold in the area. That's why an appraisal is very important because the appraiser is going to take those things into consideration and value them accordingly. But it may not be valued the way you think it should be. Like for instance, if you said you'd spend $20,000 in, in upgrades in your kitchen, you might not get a $20,000 but most of the time you will not get that $20,000 but because the thing is, you upgraded the kitchen to your taste. Not necessarily to the taste of another buyer. So if you upgrade it to 20,000, another buyer might come in there and wanna rip that whole thing out and do their own thing. That's the thing. So whenever you upgrade your home, not you're upgrading it to your personal taste, not necessarily the taste of the public. And it's going to be very hard for you to find someone with your exact taste, right? And of course, um, everybody like an upgraded kitchen. So someone might come in and say, oh, this is nice. The kitchen is upgraded. But if I did that, I would have done different counters. Or but if I did that, I would have not made the cabinet that color. Or but if I did the floors, I would have done some of the flooring right? There's always a but, right? So you can't please the public. So keep this in mind when you're also upgrading, you know, when you're renovating and doing things to the home, keep in mind that not everyone is going to appreciate what you're doing and you may not necessarily get that value back on the property. So listen your house with a realtor. It is very important that you choose a realtor that is to your liking, one that's reputable, one that has a truck record of being successful in selling homes, and also try to listen to your realtor because their job is to try to get you the best price possible. If you don't trust the realtor or you don't agree with what they're saying, maybe it's not a good idea for you to use that realtor. Maybe you should go and shop around for another realtor that's going to be in line with your core value. Now, if you interview four or five different realtors and they're all telling you the same thing and you're going against it, then you might need to kind of examine that a little bit like, mm, maybe maybe I should try to listen to them or maybe I could do a compromise stuff like that right all right so I we're at the end of the video I don't like to do long videos because then you get bored with them but if you have any questions please feel free to send us an email or make a comment down below or give us a call and we will definitely try to answer your questions thank you so much for listening we appreciate your time